As we continue down the spinal cord, looking at the spinal nerves, let's consider something that happens to the naming convention when we go from the cervical region of the spinal cord to the thoracic region. So, again, the spinal nerves are going to be named according to their exit points and they're going to be named according to the vertebra below the exit point in this cervical region. So again, we have C1 exiting above the first cervical vertebra, then we have C2, C3, C4, and these are going to form the cervical plexus along with some contribution from C5. So here's C5, C6, C7. Right over here, this is cervical vertebra number seven. Now, this is, again, C7. If we continue this naming convention, this next spinal nerve, which exits above the first th thoracic vertebra, should be called T1, but it isn't because at this point, we go from naming the spinal nerve according to the vertebra below it to the vertebra above it. So right over here, this is going to be called C8 because the cervical vertebra above is C7 and there is no C8, but now we're going to name it according to the vertebra above it, so this becomes C8. That's a little bit confusing. Uh, from here on in though, the spinal nerve is going to acquire the name of the thoracic vertebra above the exit point. So again, this is C7, it's leaving above C7. This is C8, it's leaving below C7.